We just put some witchcraft on some sheets of plywood using a jigsaw and some paint to come up with this haunted Halloween silhouette scene <laughs> with witches in a cauldron. And we'll show you how we did it right now. What is up? A welcome back. Do you like to do it, build it, or make it? So do we. And we have a new video each week. This week, we're brewing up something crafty for the yard. Something spooky. Like a little witch's silhouette scene with the cauldron, maybe a creepy tree. If you guys have been following us for a while, you know, at least you should know, that we always win the neighborhood Halloween house decorating contest. <laughs> always. So this year, of course, we're going to add something out extra to our front yard. So typically we've had everything on the house. We cover it in spiders. We've got some really cool blow-ups, mm -hmm. but we don't have much going on in the yard. Well, two things happened. One of the blow-ups popped. Yeah, it well, will, it just yeah. stopped blowing up. It was it's, a really cool blow-up castle. It was yeah. really cool, so. Made noise, head spun. We've got a new idea to replace it this year, and that's next week's video, so it'll give you something to look forward to. But for this week, uh, we're gonna add some things to the yard. We don't have a lot going on in the yard. We had this uh, cool coffin that kind of fell apart last year, so. A lot of rain last year. Yes, I mean, it rained the entire month of October. Everything got soaked, and I think that's why the blow-ups messed up. Yeah. But anyway, so we're gonna start with something new for the yard. We're gonna, like he said, we're gonna do some uh, black silhouette cutouts that we're expecting to be about uh, four feet and six feet for the trees. They're going to be big. We got we got some big ideas. <laughs> oh, she's as got usual. some big ideas. <laughs> so we're going big. Step one. <sighs> Design. <laughs> oh, you yeah. thought you thought I was going to say I gather all your supplies, but we don't even know what we need yet. We know we want to go big, but I know I don't want to go freehand either. Although Garrett could freehand it. I tried to tell him you could probably do this, but I'm trying to make something that anybody can do, like myself, because I cannot freehand. I cannot draw, but he can. But we're going to give you an idea. We're going to show you how to do this without having to know how to draw, without having to be an artist. <laughs> so we knew we couldn't cut a stencil that big, four foot by whatever it's going to be. We decided to go with a projector. But I'm not going to spend money on a projector for maybe a one-time project. I couldn't think of another use for it. So we did a little research on some DIY projectors and we found some good ideas. We took some things from here and there and we came up with what we think is a pretty good idea. So the basic concept is you needed a box, a light source, and some kind of transparency. That's really what it boils down to. That easy. No, it's not. It's not that easy. You think it is. The box piece was easy. Sure. No affiliation. We found a box that worked. We cut a hole in it. <laughs> so the box is to cut out the residual light. And then the hole is to kind of focus the light on your image. There's the tricky part. The image. We tried just a regular piece of paper with some black ink. Didn't work. Wouldn't go through. Then we tried a transparency, um, but it, helped, it had some frost on it. So again, the white diffused the light so much, you couldn't see it. And then we tried it on these little stickers. I lost them. And those worked. They were clear stickers, but uh, the image was so small by the time it got big, it was blurry. And we didn't have any clear transparencies, and I didn't want to go buy a pack of them. So we saw where you could draw on some clear plastic wrap or even sandwich bags, but yes. again, that's freehanding and we weren't going to try to freehand it. So we ended up cutting little pieces, all of our little pieces, like our witches. Can you see that? On our Cricut out of some black cardstock. Then we just used some clear packing tape as our transparency, stuck it on there, put it over the hole. So then we needed a light source. Seems simple, right? It, it wasn't that simple. <laughs> first, first we tried a floodlight but it was too diffused, you couldn't yeah, see it. Yeah, the idea was, look at all this light it was gonna produce, no. Then we tried a regular, whatever this Halogen is. Halogen light, yeah, Halogen or something, light. I don't know what they're about. Yeah. Then we tried an LED bulb, nope, couldn't nope. get an image. Then we tried to go with a halogen light, for like one of those powerful lights, but it had all these little dots all over it, it was weird. Yeah, it would, yep, that didn't work. So we tried a 
a big sunlight LED corn cob thing. <laughs> Nope, couldn't tell what, what it was. It was and this is everywhere. no joke. I kept going back in the house and finding new bulbs. How about this one? How about this one? This one's definitely going to work. No. So none of the light bulbs worked. None of them worked. Moved on to flashlights. Tried a flashlight with a strip of LEDs, but there was images everywhere because there's a bunch of little bulbs. <laughs> so we moved on to flashlights and a bunch of little bulbs, so there was a bunch of images. So different types of flashlights, like a mag light, had a single LED. But there's something about the reflective material in here that made the image like get really blurry. So finally we found this seven dollar flashlight <laughs> at Walmart. It's a little Ozark Trail. Little Ozark Trail. <laughs> yeah. It's got a single LED, no reflective material, works great. But uh, a lot of dry in here. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got our box. We've got our little cutouts. I don't think I mentioned that these were cut out on our Cricut. So we just use regular cardstock, cut them right out on our Cricut. We're going to put them on, on the tape. So put the tape over the hole. And go down to the garage. And now it'll project that image. So, um, yes. Another thing we need is a, a big dark room. Because we want to go four foot tall, we need a large dark space, so we're going to use the garage. So once we get down there with our light source box and our transparency in place, it was just a game of focus. Yeah. You're trying to move the image closer or further away from the wall to get it the right size, and you're trying to move the light source closer and further away from the image to get the right size. Focus. It's just a game of focus, yeah. Just moving around the, the light source and the image until it looks about right and then we can start tracing it we're going to trace it using these markers i think the biggest problem we're having is staying out of the light Step four. Now we're gonna make all of our cuts. <laughs> we're gonna put a pilot hole anywhere where we have to cut an interior spot. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to just cut the entire thing out, trying to stay on the outside of the black marker line with the uh, jigsaw. Or something close to it. I have a feeling it's going to be... It's a silhouette. It doesn't need to be perfect. That's what I mean. Yeah, it will be fine. Mm -hmm. Step five. Ooh, now we paint. We're just gonna roll our paint on. Doesn't need to be perfect. I'm just gonna like... be black silhouettes. Yeah, I don't even feel like painting. I don't know if you guys saw our social media post. Garrett is sick, but he's being a trooper <laughs> trying to get through this video. So I might be doing this painting by myself. In between cutting and painting, I had some chicken. It did not agree with me. Yeah, I think it's food poisoning. Oh, man. Yeah. All right, that's enough. Huh? He's trying to break it before we ever get it installed. I am. Step six. Now we install them. We're going to use some zip ties and just zip tie them to our rails. But on the outside, right? Yeah. Going to lay these witches down. Oh. Yeah, on the outside. The edges, the paint got kind of thick, so it might not be dry yet. Yeah. <laughs> might not be dry. Zip, All right. Zip ties. Well, yeah, zip ties. I have them right here.
So we cut the tree in half, the trees in half, so that we can store them later on. So I'm going to take these little one and a half inch screws and uh, fence pick it and put them back together. Or just piece them together for now. Step seven. Now we're gonna put these LED lights around the backs of all the witches. Y you know what I'm saying. You'll see what I'm saying. Got this uh, LED tape. Can you guys hear that dog barking? <laughs> That's why we don't film outside. That and can you guys even see us? It's getting kind of dark now, but that's perfect for when we turn them on. Where do you want the light, the cord, this side or that side? All right, what do you guys think? Came out pretty cool. I think the red really sets it off. Yes, makes the whole thing look spooky. So the cutting was a little bit harder than I thought, a little more challenging, but the painting was super easy, especially with that little trimmer brush. Yes, that, that Sherline pad really made the painting go quickly, a lot faster than the cutting, but the time, it was time well spent. Look how great this looks. Looks great. Now we need to add to the rest of our yard. But uh, we're out of time. Look what time it is. <laughs> it's way past time. So we got to go. So we will see you again next week where we'll do it, build it, and make it again. And I have absolutely nothing to balance. Nothing. Everything's tied up. Yeah, everything's <laughs> bolted down, tied down. Oh, you got a witch? Oh, I got a witch. Hold on, Court. One witch, uh, a random witch. Woo! Which was ready to fly away. <laughs>